Did you just buy the iPower Pro Max only to find the cables come with no connectors? This is something you have to solder on yourself. Well, I'm Jesse from VCC Board Repairs. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to solder on these connectors to the cables so you can start using your new tool. So this job is pretty simple. It only took you a few minutes to complete. And I'm gonna walk you through this whole process in this video. So do me a favor. Hit that like button if you enjoy this type of content and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is basically what you get. It is the cable with three ends, one for each connector. You get multiple connectors and heat shrinks. So let me show you a cable that is almost complete. So I have the two connectors, uh, the heat shrinks, so in this case, we're going to do a heat shrink over this cable. You make sure you do this first before you solder because you cannot get the uh, heat shrink over the connector after you solder it on. So let's do this first. Then we grab our connector you're going to work on and let's go under the microscope. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Get some flux. You want to apply it to the pins. You can use your tweezers to hold things down. And then the cable, you want to make sure you have something heavy holding it down. I use this 2x2 two two inch uh, steel block. Uh, I can link in the description below so you can get one if you're interested. And you want to hold the cable in place. Now you'll see that there's uh, letters here. So it's black, green, blue, white, yellow, red. Black and red are always at the ends. You'll see the connectors are actually larger. That is because that is the power and ground for these. And then the center ones are the data lines. If you look at the user manual, you'll also see the color coded guide. So first step, let's just tin this connector first. What that means is we're gonna add solder to the connector. So just touch your iron and Apply it like that. I'm going to have some solder pre added to the flex. This makes it so much easier to solder once. Um, and you'll see right now. So, this is the tricky part. If, it, if you're having trouble, you can also use some Kapton tape to hold the connector down to your bench. But let me. So let's do the red one first. And what I like to do here is this is the first one, so this is always a hard one because everything is moving. All right, so you see what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat the pad on the flex, not the cable, and let the oh, almost there. Let me grab my tweezer on this side. Probably easier if I do this. All right, so just hit, hit the pad and let the solder flow to the cable. Okay, so next is yellow. So Y for yellow. Got to just deal with the movements here. All right, so in this case, I'm going to hold it like that. There you go. So I was able to kind of press it into position. The white one here is next. There you go. So there's a there's two B's on here. One thing to remember is B for blue is the one in the middle. Black is always at the end. All right, same thing. All right, this keeps moving. Put it back into frame. All right, let me try this again. And this thing keeps moving. All 
let me add let me add a little more flux here now this will test your patience so <laughs> especially if you're still learning how to solder this will be a little annoying at first all right See what I did? I just hit it with some flux, some solder. It's my other tweezers. Right next is green. Which goes here. Right, so you want to line it up. Right. Your iron. All right, that one got got the solder really good and then we gotta maneuver this black wire here to the ground the negative side all right that's it so one thing you can do do a, a visual inspection make sure none of these are touching each other but since it's kind of hard to see right now because all the flux, let's go ahead and clean off this flux so we could see better. So I'm using isopropyl alcohol. Okay, all looks coming back. All right, and then also, if you noticed, you got to do quick little quick little taps with your iron. You don't want to hold your iron there for too long. All right, so I see some some form of debris here. Uh, looks like a hair, like lint or something here. Uh, all right, so nothing in between. One thing you can do is use your multimeter check for continuity between the two uh, pins next to each other so these two aren't touching these are not touching these are not touching so as long as none of these are touching to each other then you're good so now what we do is slide the heat shrink over it all right, so we're probably going to cover the 11 part, which is fine. I could write it later with a marker. Essentially what you do. So I have my hot air to 130, 130 Celsius and 65 air. Make sure you're very uh, careful with this. You don't want to put too much heat where it desolders from the flex. But the way this thing works is with the heat, it shrinks, hence the name heat shrink. All right. I think he's moving out of frame, so let me do that. So the goal is to kind of just hit both sides. You know, take your time. The goal is to kind of shrink it around the connector so it grabs on and it kind of protects the, the solder joints. All right, so. Now one thing to keep in mind, it doesn't shrink completely over the cable, so it just, just the way it is but that's kind of what the end result would be now if you want since that since that 11 model was erased recovered you just write 11 like that now you don't have to worry about knowing what model it is so there you go All right, so there you have it. The connector is now soldered on. I can finally start using this to 
uh, test devices with my DC power supply. You know, as you can see in the video, it is pretty simple. Sometimes you do have to fight the little connector moving around, but taping it down to your bench with some Kapton tape should help with that. And let me know in the comments below what you think about this coming incomplete. Basically, you're paying for a product that you have to finish building. Now, they claim they did this because the connectors can get damaged during shipping. I don't buy it. I think they're just trying to sell it at a lower price point. You know, most of us already solder, so soldering these connectors are no big deal. But the real question to you is, would you pay two to three times more for this to get it complete? I think I would just because I don't want to spend time basically finishing their product. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, I had to solder them. But, you know, I do prefer buying complete products. You know, it is a useful tool that will pay for itself pretty quickly. So, I don't know. Let me know below in the comments what you think. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. And check out the links in the description. I have my recommended tools. You know, everything I use here in this video down below. And until next time, goodbye.